何がおかしいガープ。<laughs> I would like to issue a public apology to the hero of the Marines, m a r k i n d e Garp, because when we did the top 32 in the Cross Guild Discord hosted by Sigma De Leo, you can find the link of the video down in the description. I actually put Ben Beckman above Garp. <laughs> I know. I know. I was I was young, reckless, stupid, and inexperienced. But chapter 1080 has shown me the error of my ways because holy crap, Garb may be old, but he still got those moves going. I think I speak for everyone when I say that this is a fantastic time to be a One Piece fan, right? You would think that after 25 years of manga, One Piece would start going downhill, but not even close. And Chapter 1080 proves why those of us who have high expectations for the Marines, especially for the Admirals, yes, yes, for g r i m b l e as well, we won't be disappointed at all. Anyways,、um, let's see what this chapter has for us, shall we? So, this chapter fully focuses on Hachinosu, Blackbeard's Island, and we start by seeing that Kobe actually escaped. Thanks to the help of Perona, in exchange of him helping g e k o m o r i a out. We also get to know the devil fruit of some of the other Blackbeard pirates. Avaro Pizarro is an island man. He seems to be a similar power to Pika, I guess, although I don't know if Pizarro can just merge and control land or he can actually become an island. This, this definitely makes me wonder who is going to be the one to actually fight the Valo Pizarro now, because if his powers work similar to Pika, then I think Sanji might actually be the only person to deal with him, because back in Dressrosa, it took Zoro a long time to defeat Pika, because Pika was moving around the places, right? So it was hard for Zoro to actually reach Pika to land the blows. So, if Avalo Pizarro's powers work similarly, the only way to deal with him would be with someone that is fast enough to go from point A to point B in a very, very small fraction of time and with good enough observation hacky to locate wherever Avalo Pizarro could be. So, I think that Sanji actually might be the one fighting Pizarro here. Then we get to see Vasco shot and he gets the Gluck Gluck fruit and he is called a Booze Man. I don't know, maybe his powers will work in a similar way Magellan's works. And basically, him being able to generate alcohol out of his body, like Magellan was able to generate poison out of his body. And considering how flammable alcohol is, and what Vasco Shot says about burning down the city, these men could actually have some really good fire abilities in store. Now, we keep moving on, and we are essentially told how the Cross Guild bounty system works, and that is with stars. And apparently, Kobe has a five star bounty, which is equivalent to 500 million berries. But they say that Kobe has an unusually high bounty for someone of his rank, which probably means that either he is stronger than most captains or that his status as a hero among the Marines actually increased his bounty. As Kobe is running away, we get a very interesting flashback where we see that Blackbeard's plan was to exchange Kobe's life for a chance to turn Hachinosu into a country recognized by the world government. And that Kobe tells them that there is no way that the Marines are going to accept any deal with Blackbeard or pirates, essentially, because he is from Sword. Throughout Kiji, we learn that Sword is essentially the name of a group of Marines that are basically free agents. They presented their resignation, so even though they technically steal Marines because they're not fired, they can essentially do whatever they want and pick a fight with whoever they want without following the chain of command at all. Of course, this means, like Aokiji and Kobe say in this chapter, that if something happens to sword members, they are on their own. Neither the Marine HQ or the Gorosei will grant them any type of support, and they can fire them at any moment. Either one, Garp is the one that created Sword. Two, Garp is the inspiration for the creation of the concept of Sword. Or three, Garp is a member of Sword. Because what Aokiji essentially tells us the sword member do. Is essentially how Garb actually a c t because Garb goes wherever he wants, he does whatever he wants, and he does not follow the codes of the Marines. He picks fight with whoever he wants as well, but unlike Sword's members, I think he can do it because he is the hero of the Marine, he has that hero status. Because as far as I can tell, Garb has never been addressed as a Sword member ever since we found out 
about the existence of this organization. So after this flashback, we get back to the present, and we see that the Marines have actually come to Hashinosu to rescue Kobe, and we get to see some Marine action. We actually are introduced to Tsuru's granddaughter, Kujaku, and uh, she seems to be intense. Then we are... <laughs> Then we get Hibari, a marine commander, and she seems to be utilizing Vegapunk's flower gun powder. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but that's what it seems like. And the man with the drip for the chapter, Prince. Prince. Who apparently is the user of the clay clay fruit. I would guess that his powers probably work similar to Mr. 3. He says, based on what we see, these three marines in this panel here seem to be clay creations. So similar to Mr. Three wax clones or something like that. Now, at the end of the chapter, we get the biggest highlight and we get the answer to the question many have been asking ever since we learned that Garp was actually going after Kobe, which is how strong is Garp? Or at least how does he fight? Or at least how could he stand a chance against the likes of Goldie Roger? Now, some people are saying that this could be advanced armament hockey, but I think it's pretty obvious this is advanced Congress. I mean, considering who Garp is, what Roger said about him, and who his son and grandson are, advanced Congress hockey is the only logical explanation to what Garp is actually doing here. It is true that we've seen black lining with armament hockey before, but the size and the shape of the lining when Congress hockey is being infused is completely different. This is what armament hockey lightning looks like and this is what advanced conquest hockey lightning looks like and garbs is definitely advanced conquest hockey now let me go to headcanon territory a little bit and try to speculate what garb could potentially be doing in this specific panel so based on what we've seen so far there could be three categories or three techniques with advanced conquest hockey the first one is Conqueror's Haki Sealing or Hardening. So this technique is when you use Conqueror's Haki Infusion, but you don't flow the Haki, so it remains sealed or hardened. This could be the one that Zoro used against King, because despite Zoro using Advanced Conqueror's Haki, his attacks were actually do connecting physically with King and not creating any shockwaves. Now, you could say that this could be due to Zoro's lack of mastery over Advanced Conqueror's Haki, but I don't think so, because we've seen Kaido as well do the same move. Since his Thunder Baguas in Chapter 923 and his Ragnarok in Chapter 1009, the two techniques that he actually used to knock Luffy out, they made direct contact with Luffy. One thing that confirmed this is the fact that Law saw Luffy get hit by Kaido in these two occasions, and he himself was hit with the Thunder Bagua. However, he was still shocked when he saw that Luffy was not touching Kaido when he started using Advanced Conqueror's Haki against him. So my guess is this could probably be one way to use Conqueror's Haki Infusion, and this could actually be the go-to for swordsmen specifically when they want to cut and not just inflict damage. The second technique of Advanced Conqueror's Haki is the one that we've seen very often, and that is Conqueror's Haki Flow, the one that actually creates shockwaves. And the third one could be what we just see Garb do here in Chapter 1080, which is Conqueror's Haki Projection, I would call it, or essentially the ability to shoot Conqueror's Haki. The reason why I believe this is because so far, I think we've only seen three characters in One Piece that have shown this type of ability based on Hagi and not Deborah Fruits. And those are Garp in this chapter, 1080, very likely Shanks, and believe it or not, King Elisabello back in Dressrosa. You could say that the Rokyogan is something similar, but what I'm talking about here is not necessarily the ability in and itself, but the size of the ability, right? and the amount of damage that he can, he can create. Now, if we go back to what King Elisabello did, it looks almost identical to what Garp is doing here. Of course, this man had to charge his attack for a whole hour, but what other ability we can think of that could actually make an average fighter like Elisabello be able to unleash such an Admiral slash Yonko level attack if it's not Advanced Conqueror's Haki? 
And just for those who may say we've seen island level attacks before, Luffy himself was hugely impressed by King Punch, right? And he said he's never seen anything like that before. And this is the same Luffy that already had King Kong gun in his arsenal. And even if we look at it in the anime, we can actually see that it seems like King Elizabeth is actually shooting something out of his fist, you know? Now for Shanks, this would also explain how he was able to reach Grimble from such a far distance with his Advanced Conqueror's Haki. I know it's Advanced Conqueror's Haki because we see black lining, right? But if we look at the distance, and I think King of Lining is the one that actually did a full breakdown of the distance considering where Shanks was and the size of Zunisha and all that. The only thing that would explain Shanks being able to use Advanced Conqueror's Haki and reach Grimble from such distance is if he actually shot it. And on one interesting note is that when Shanks attacks Green Bull, we can see his hand is in his sword, right? And in film Red, his final attack is literally him kind of like shooting Haki out of his sword as well. I don't know. This is just my take on this scenario. I think it could be possible. But, you know, it's just like I said, it's headcanon. So let me know what you think about that. Now, I think that this chapter gives us a much better perspective as to how capable Garp and Sengoku were back in their prime and how, despite what people may say, Garp and Sengoku were clearly up there with the likes of Roger and, and Whitebeard, easily being able to compete with them somewhat equally. And this definitely puts more hype towards the Admirals, in my opinion, uh, because usually the new generation tends to surpass the old one, right? I mean, if it applies to Luffy, and people are suggesting that it applies to Shanks and Roger as well, why wouldn't it apply to the current admirals, right? I'm just saying. Because I've never really understood this strange concept that Garp and Sengoku could keep up with legends like Roger, Whitebeard, and Shiki, the Yonkos of their times, basically. But for some strange reason, current day admirals wouldn't be able to be at least a challenge for the current Yonkos. Of course, not all admirals are equal, but they should all be pretty relative to each other, and all of them should be an actual threat to any Yonko. Yes, even Green Bull should be able to push any Yonko to a high diff. And I don't think this is a controversial take or something debatable, because if Yamato, who I think we can all agree is not on the same caliber as the admirals, could perform so well against Kaido. I think most of us would agree that any Admiral, Green Bull, Fujitora, Akizara, Okiji, and especially Akainu can definitely push Kaido to a high difficulty fight. And this chapter is just a reminder, man, that the Admirals are up for the challenge. In every sense of the word, Garp is an Admiral, right? Because he was offered the rank anyways. So to keep saying that an Admiral stand no chance against the Yonko at this point, I don't think is, is an accurate take. It's about time to put some respect to the Admiral. Okay, I'm done. Chapter 1080, great chapter. Um, let me know what you guys think. Take care.